What's going on guys? This is Dave from Otaku and today we're going to do a quick video on how to set up Morphman. Cool. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up Anki. So you have my Anki open up right here. This is the same exact profile that I used for the last video where I showed how to set up Anki for a beginner. Um, so before I talk about setting up Morphman at all, I do want to talk a little bit about um, what Morphman is good for and what it is not good for and clear up some um, opinions, I guess. Or, I mean, and this is just my own personal opinion. Now, I would say that nothing beats traditional sentence mining. I think that traditional sentence mining is the most effective way to really get your words to sink in. That means using something like voracious or uh, using something like uh, learn language with Netflix and directly picking out your own sentences uh, and putting those into your Anki and I think that is the absolute best way to sentence mine. Um, and I think that uh, Morphman isn't as effective. However, Morphman can be made to be very effective and it can be made to be um, a little bit faster than uh, using something like Voracious or using something like um, Learn Language with Netflix and using um, like ShareX with Learn Language with Netflix. Now, those are both awesome options and I will not shit on them at all. Uh, but I will say that Morphman can be made to be uh, pretty effective uh, with sentence mining as well. Um, and especially if you set up your Morphman to do deep dives, it can be set up to be very effective. Still not quite as effective as traditional sentence mining, but not too far off in my personal opinion. Um, Especially if you have it set up where, you know, you watch the episode and then you immediately study uh, the words that Morphman gives you for that episode right afterwards. Or vice versa, you study the words first and then you go watch the episodes so that you can see them in action. Um, now, I think that's a really, really great method to do it. However, you know, traditional sentence mining will always be king. Um, and until the day uh, that it's made to be very, very fast, like you can already do it pretty quickly with like Voracious and using ShareX on Learn Language with Netflix. Um, I hope that someday in the near future, Learn Language with Netflix will just have a direct capability where we can use um, Anki Connect with uh, that system. And if they do, I think that would be the absolute uh, top method to sentence mine. You can just watch the shows and as you're going, it's a one click kind of thing or maybe two click kind of thing. I think that would be best. Um, and the day that happens, I will probably stop using Morphman. I'll just watch shows on my couch and sentence mine at the same time. Um, but for now, uh, I still use Morphman pretty regularly, not for all the words that I mine. Um, but for a lot of the words that I mine, but I have it at this point where I have it set up where I literally watch a new episode of the show that I'm deep diving. Um, and later that day, I study the same exact words that I just saw on the show and that I was able to look up, ironically, most of the time with learning language with Netflix. So anyways, uh, now that that's out of the way, um, let's go ahead and set this up if that's something that you're still interested in doing is setting up Morphman. So right here, we have our Anki. Uh, you'll see that if I go down to my add-ons, I don't have Morphman currently installed. So why don't we go ahead and install that real quick. So here is the Morphman Anki page. If you just Google uh, Morphman Anki 2.1, it'll come right up. I'll also have the link in the description. We're gonna go ahead and take this code, copy it, and we're gonna go ahead and install it just like we did in the last video. Get add-ons, paste that right in there, hit okay, and it will install the add-on. Great, once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and close out of Anki. That way the add-on can be brought into the system and then we're just going to go ahead and reopen it. Cool. Now you have Anki reopened, you go down to tools and you go to add-ons, you should see that Morphman has been installed. Great. So um, Morphman is a great tool, um, but it's a little bit complicated to set up. Uh, it can be really, really easy once you understand how it's done, but um, for a lot of people, they have issues setting it up. And I think the reason why people have issues setting it up is because they found a guide like the MIA guide, which is great for Morphman. Um, but they kind of just followed it a little too blindly and um, they almost uh, did identically what was in the guide. And you can't do that. Uh, you have to do what it is for your card specifically. So today I'm gonna go over real quick how you can do that. So the first thing you're gonna go down to is you're gonna go down to tools, Morphman, and you're gonna go to your preferences page, right? So it's gonna open it up to this first page right here. And I think this is where most people have already made the mistake <laughs> for their cards, right? So let's go ahead and delete both of these cards. Okay. 
Okay, and now let's go ahead and set it up for the actual cards that we have. So if you go to your browser and you look at your cards, um, this is like a Tango deck. This is the one that MI, or not the, uh, this is not the one that MI distributes. This is the one that Nuke um, Marine distributes. Um, so you gotta make sure that you're looking at your cards and your field names specifically and make sure that you're putting in the right stuff as opposed to just writing what you saw in like the MIA guide or another guide. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So when you go to your preferences page, you want to make sure that you have that card type selected. Now if you want Morph Man to work with tags, you can. I have never set it up to do anything like that. Um, if you're trying to like, I only wanted to look at cards with this specific tag, you can do that, right? Um, but I don't know how that would be super helpful nowadays with some of the advances in Morph Man. So the next thing you want to do is look at your field, right? So if I go back to my browser again um, and I look at this first card, you'll notice that my sentence field is contained in this field right here. It says Tango sent Japanese. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that and you can actually copy it right here, control C, and then go right back to my preferences page. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's pasted right into my fields. Next thing, Morphemizer, you want to make sure it's set to the language that you're using. For this case, we're using Japanese. And then you have this little button right here that says modify. And <laughs> it's smart enough to have a question mark. Um, so that modify button is for if you want Morph Man to reorganize that deck um, in a uh, 1T or I plus one manner to make it um, find you new cards. So the JLPT Tango decks, they are already in 1T order and they're already in a good order. So let's not mess with that. So we're not gonna modify that. However, um, I do want it to look at this Substar SRS deck that I made. This is for the show Sankarea. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this and then I am going to go ahead and figure out how I can make it look at this Sankarea deck. So if I go over here to my browser again, go to Sankarea, um, I can go ahead and look at my cards and look at the top and you'll see that it subs to SRS Japanese. So I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and pick the card type, the note type rather, uh, subs to SRS tag Japanese tags. And if I don't change this field name, this won't be able to look at the cards properly. So we're gonna go ahead and go back and look at where the actual field name is captured. And that's in this expression field, right? Uh, this isn't the best card to see this, but if I go to a card with an actual sentence like this one, Kodomo no Korakara, so I can find this expression right here and I can go ahead and copy it. So maybe that's a little bit easier for you to find. You don't wanna do the one that has your Furigana in it. If you have a separate field for Furigana, you wanna make sure that you're using the actual uh, normal sentence from whatever it is that you're using. I'm assuming your Substar SRS deck. So go here and we're gonna go ahead and paste that right there. And then we're gonna make sure it's set to Japanese again. And then once again, we have the question here, do we wanna modify it? Well, this is Substar SRS deck. This deck is not in 1T I plus one order. Um, it is in order that it came in in the show right now. So I do wanna modify it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click modify. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next tab. So here you wanna make sure that uh, you have the proper field name in this spot. So if you look at this um, deck right here, this is the deck that we're gonna be modifying, right? We need to make sure that we have the proper name. So our focus uh, field for this deck is just called focus. It's not called focus morph. It's not called, you know, focus whatever, MM. Uh, it's just called focus. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make sure that this says focus, right? Now, if you have a card that doesn't have a focus field in it or a focus morph field in it, you can go ahead and quickly add that in. Um, if it's a deck that you want Morph Man to modify. If it's a deck that you don't want Morph Man to modify, then you don't necessarily have to um, have a focus field in it. But if you're going to modify the deck, it has to have a focus field. And you can quickly add that if you just click your fields button here and then go in here and then you can click add and add a field. So we obviously have the focus one in there already. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave that alone go back to our preferences page and the rest of these you could probably just leave blank. So um, how you want to set up your tags page is up to you but generally speaking this is a good way to do it in my opinion. Um, this is based on the current MIA guidance and I think it's fine. I think in my real deck this still says uh, I plus one and this says I plus zero and this says I plus two and this says I plus 0.5 but that's because 
when I started doing this, that's when uh, MIA, that's like what they call this stuff. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, so once we get over to the general tab, then we can make a couple of decisions. Um, these first three options, uh, generally speaking, you wanna keep those clicked. However, ignore grammar position, uh, ignore everything within these two different types of brackets um, and treat proper nouns as known. Those are kind of up to you. Um, I would probably say you don't wanna ignore grammar position because um, Morphman doesn't understand the difference really between grammar and normal words. Uh, it just sees grammar as words, right? And so if you ignore grammar, you're not going to get grammar cards or um, you're not going to get 1T grammar cards. Um, not that Morphman is the best about picking those kind of things out, but it's best to just leave it unchecked. However, this last one, I actually like to have this checked. I personally don't find it beneficial to study cards that the morph that I'm learning, that the 1T word that I'm learning is just a character name or like a place name. Um, so I don't wanna have cards for proper nouns. Now, if you were doing a deck and you wanted to learn the spelling of Tokyo or you wanted to learn the spelling of a really important place in Japan or of any language, I guess, then having that unchecked would be great. Or if you were learning like a history deck, then yeah. But if it's for, if it's for just a random show that you're watching and you're watching the show, chances are you'll be able to learn the names of the characters through just watching the show. So that's just how I have it set up. You can definitely do it the way you like. So we're gonna hit apply. And then we're gonna go ahead and recalc our database, right? So bring this back here, you go to tools, you can go to morph man and you can go to recalc or you can just hit, as it says right here, the hotkey control M. Cool, and you'll see that Morph Man says, great, you know 848 morphs and 933 um, variants of those morphs. Now, if that doesn't, that number, whatever you got is wrong, if it still says zero, zero, if it says something from a previous setup for Morph Man that you've screwed up <laughs> setting up, then we can go in there and we can go ahead and edit that. So we're gonna go to go tools, we're gonna go back to Morph Man, and then we're gonna go to, uh, you can go to Database Manager or Readability Analyzer, we'll stick with the Readability Analyzer, uh, and then you can go right into your database by clicking on that button there. So if that's the case, if your databases are messed up for you, um, don't be afraid to delete your databases. I'm gonna go ahead and regroup these real quick. Um, so all these files right here are your database files, and they say so right there in the type column. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and literally delete them. I'm gonna go back to my homepage here and then I'm just gonna recalculate my database. Cool, now so for me, those numbers were right. Um, and you shouldn't be too afraid to delete your databases, right? Uh, Morphman is going to look at the data that you already have and it's going to rebuild it based on its right, on what you have and how you have it set up. So if you've set up your preferences page right, if you have set it up properly, Oops, wrong preferences page. <laughs> if you have set up your preferences pages right um, and you have set up this section specifically properly, then you should have no problem at all uh, making sure that you haven't messed anything up. Now, the biggest thing is making sure that you're picking the right node type and that you're picking the right field names and that you're, I would literally copy and paste these in um, because, you know, if you put in a lowercase letter instead of an uppercase letter, that will mess up this process. Let's go ahead and apply again. Go ahead and recalculate my database because why not? Cool, and then, so this is what we're gonna talk about real quick next. I already have made a video on how to set up your first deep dive. If you're interested in using Morphman, uh, the most efficient way, in my opinion, I really suggest you follow that video. Um, doing deep dives is way more effective than just using Morphman by itself and letting it pick random cards from random episodes of random shows. Uh, this is a much more organized and detailed way so that you can use Morphman along with your immersion uh, smartly. So why don't we go here, we're gonna go open up our Morphman Readability Analyzer, once again, that's just under Tools, and then Morphman, and then Readability Analyzer, or you can just hit Control A, like I just did. And you can go ahead and set up Morphman how you would like. So in this situation, I have it set up for Sankare, which is the show that I talked about before. Um, you're just gonna go ahead and pick whatever show you would want that you have subtitle files for. Um, so you have to have the subtitle files downloaded on a computer. Once again, I go into this in a lot more detail in that other video. Subs, select folder. Um, you're gonna go ahead and select your frequency list. I'll have these two frequency lists uh, linked in the description below. Um, there is one here for um, with proper nouns. 
and without proper nouns. Um, since I have it set up to not use proper nouns, I'm gonna go ahead and use the frequency list that doesn't have proper nouns in it. Uh, and then these two should already be selected properly. It's just your known database and your output directory should just be your database. And then um, you can leave everything else as it is. So this is the biggest area where you can affect uh, how Morphman works with your deep dive. Once again, watch that deep dive video. I go into way more detail about all that. So I'm gonna go to analyze. Cool. And real quick, now we can see that this show would take us forever to study if all we have studied is the N5 Tango deck. So it's saying to get to 90% at um, the minimum maximum frequency of 256, which is uh, using only the top 15,000 words in Japanese, uh, it would be, we'd have to learn 1,200 words and we still wouldn't even get to our target percentage. So here's your old Morphan readability per episode, and here is your new Morphan readability per episode, um, you see that it never got to 90%. Uh, it it stuck, got stuck in the 80s, right? Mostly the low 80s for the most part too. I don't think any, yeah, not one of them got above 85. So maybe this isn't the best show for you to study. Um, and this is one of the reasons that if you're gonna go the deep dive Morphan path, that I strongly suggest that you also do the Tango N4 book. Um, it, opens up your options for a lot better uh, sentences and for Morphman to work better for you in the future. So once you have set up your readability analyzer, you're gonna hit Control M again, recap your database or do it manually. Cool, and with that, Morphman is pretty much set up. From there, you can start studying using Morphman. Uh, I definitely suggest that if you're gonna be using Morphman um, for a large portion of your studying, then uh, you should really check out that deep dive video that I've made so that you can learn a little bit better about how deep dives work specifically and a little bit how to set up a deep dive for your cards, for uh, the show that you want to deep dive and for maybe helping you pick a show. Um, but for now, guys, that's gonna be it. Uh, yeah, cool. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and throw them down in the comments below. If you like the video, go ahead and like the video. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Later.